If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, please. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Look in verse number 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the, good, the, the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures, and that He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, and after that He was seen of, of, of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that He was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all He was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time." For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. I was listening to a preacher preached this week I was in I was driving somewhere and and he made a statement and I don't know how you are but I hear something that gets my mind kind of going I uh I I've been preaching uh in about another week or so I've been preaching 23 years I've been saved since I was probably anywhere from probably about seven years of age I've saved and baptized I've grown up in church all my life literally I've been in church all my life I know some people have they they have a hard time understanding that, but in this case, it's true. I uh, I've been preaching. I, I've been on staff at this church for for 19 years. The Lord has allowed me to do a lot of things, but I find that although that I've been in the work of God for a long time, and although I've been in church a long time, I find, brother Randy, the older I get the worse it gets. Amen. What I mean by that is, uh, you would think after being saved about all your life, and after you've been uh, preaching for a lot of your life, and you've been serving in the ministry a long time, you would think that it would, oh, it would become easier. I'm not so sure that's the case. Amen. I think the longer we go in our Christian life, the harder Satan's going to fight. Amen. The uh, Paul, I love the man. I love to read his writings. I love to, uh, I love verse number 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Amen. I want to talk to us today. If you're, if you're not saved today, you'll not understand the majority of this sermon. But at the end, I, I will talk about you as well. To, this morning, I would probably address those who are saved today. And what I mean by that is those, those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Today, I want to talk to you on this subject, areas we can never labor too much in. Areas we can never labor too much in. Let's pray and we're going to have a special. Father, thank you for your goodness and mercy to us. Thank you for your blessings in our life. Father, I pray God that you would please today, please work in this service. I pray God that you would please, if there's one here that's not saved, Father, their life needs to be changed by you today. Father, for us who have been changed, our heart, we've been saved. Lord, we still need your help. We still need your touch. And Father, please bless the special. I pray, God, that you would please help uh, today in everything that's said and done. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. my feet to stand then you led me through the valley low 
that I would hold your hand. Then on the raging sea of time, you taught my eyes to see. Like a flower, the raindrops made to grow, and you make it rain for me. You form the clouds with your own hands to hide the light of day. So that I will learn to trust in you all along the way. question tears have cried while down on bended knees for when my soul gets thirsty lord you make it rain for me we been walking many, many miles. Lord, you've never failed. Through flame and flood, you've walked with me on through the storm you Wherever they may lead Out in the desert So hot and dry I know you'll make it rain for me You form the clouds With your own hands To hide the light of day question tears have cried while down on bended knees for when my soul gets thirsty lord you make it rain for me for when my soul gets thirsty lord I know you'll make it rain for me. Well, I appreciate her singing this morning. Let me give you the background. Uh, Paul is addressing the Corinthian church. And he starts out by saying, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Now, you have to understand, the Apostle Paul, boy, what a, what a man of God he was. But he was, he was a man. And the fact of it is, Paul, uh, let me give you a little background. Paul uh, had decided uh, in his former life, uh, he was called Saul. And Saul decided that it was his public duty to go around killing all the Christians that he could kill. You'll find, in, you'll find in the Gospels there that Saul went about from house to house, I mean, killing those people who claimed the name of Christ. Uh, it did not matter uh, uh, how old they were. It did not matter. I mean, he was throwing them in jail. He was, he was, I mean, he was persecuting the church. Boy, we read about the church and we say, boy, that was so exciting. Except the problem was... <laughs> 
<laughs> not far after that came Saul. And I mean, he wreaked havoc on the church. And he, he was off to, to go somewhere to go get some more Christians. I mean, I don't know if he had a little uh, gun belt or uh, a sword uh, sheath that he put a little notch on every time he got a Christian in jail or, or he uh, hurt a Christian. I don't know. But he was a wicked man. And he went out against the Christians. And all of a sudden, one day, out on the road in Damascus, Jesus got his attention. Let me tell you this. If Jesus has not got your attention today, today would be a wonderful day for him to get your attention. You say, I I'm just here on accident. That ain't nothing to happen by accident. But God got a hold of Saul, and I'm not going to go through the whole story, but God uh, saved the, uh, Paul, uh, Saul that day, and the Bible tells us that uh, a little bit after that, that God changed his name. Now, let me say this. When you get saved, God may not change your name that you were given at birth, but He'll change your lifestyle. He'll change a lot of things about you. But we have His calling. He said, uh, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. You say, What was Paul? He was, he was what I am. He's a preacher. I mean, everywhere he went, Brother Mark, he just stood up and he preached the Word of God. And by the way, we need preaching more than we've ever needed in our entire lives. I'm going to tell you that. But it was His calling. And God God said, I want you to go. Uh, uh, the Bible says in Romans 1, 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Hey, he said, go to the Jews, go to the Gentiles, go to everybody because everybody needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, he gives his calling. But then I see he gives his list. You say, well, what do you mean? Paul is, is, is somewhat reminiscing. He says, you know, I came from, I didn't come from where everybody else came from. He said, Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. And he began to name, he began to name some people who saw Jesus after the resurrection. He, he calls the name of Cephas, which is Simon Peter. Uh, he says the twelve. Well, that was the disciples, but we'll know that one of those men, Judas, uh, committed suicide, and he was not there. Then he says 500 brethren... And basically what he says, most of them are still there. Some of them backslidden. They've they, they fallen away from what God has called them to do. Then he, called, he names James, and then he says the apostles, the men of God. But then he says this, and me. Amen. So he gives his calling, which is preaching, he gives his list of people that saw Jesus after he was resurrected. But then he gives his own history there. In verse number 9, he said, For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. He's looking back on what he did to God's people. He said, this is what I did. He says, but this is what I'm doing now. And so he gives them a history, but I love this. He gives his humbleness. He says, for I am the least of the apostles. Now i got to tell you, when you're talking about the least of the apostles, Paul's not at the top of the list. But he said, I'm the least of the apostles. Hold on. But then he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Amen. You say, what, what is that? He's given honor to where honor is due. Amen. Let me say to you today, all of us who are saved by the grace of God, all our cry should be is this, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. <laughs> I am what I am because Jesus made a difference in my life. Jesus changed my life and Jesus saved me and Jesus gave me what I have today. And you say, oh preacher, you deserve honor. Oh no, I don't. You, my, my Savior deserves honor today. You say, this church deserves honor. No, this church does not deserve honor. The one who created the church deserves our honor today. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. You know what he was saying? He was saying His grace was not wasted. He said, well, how was it not wasted? He tells us there in verse number 10, but I labored more abundantly than they all. You know what he was saying? He was saying... There were men who sat at the feet of Jesus. There were men that grew up in, 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 the, in the religious circles. There were men that knew about things that I didn't know. He said, I'm the least of them. He said, but I, I worked harder than all the rest of them. He said, I, I, I labored. Amen. And then he says this, but the grace of God which was with me. 
Can I say to you today, if you're a servant of God today, it's by the grace of God. Amen. Brother Andy, you teaching a Sunday school class today is because of the grace of God. Amen. Hey, uh, me getting to stand and preach before you today is nothing but the grace of God. Amen. Brother Mark, standing and leading a choir of people lifting up their voices to Christ, that is nothing but the grace of God. Amen. Hey, I am what I am. You say, you're not much. Well, hey, you ought to have met me before God found me. Amen. Hey, He changed us and He made us different and His grace was bestowed upon me. Let me say to you, Paul is explaining who he is or why he is, who he is because of who changed his life. It was the Lord. You know, I hope it's very apparent in your life when the Lord came to you the day you got saved. So I don't remember the day. Well, that's not necessary. I don't remember, I don't remember this. I don't, I've heard people say, I don't remember the preacher. You know what, Brother Burrell, that doesn't matter. Amen. The only thing you need to remember is that, that you needed a Savior and you called on Jesus to save you. You know, Paul said, I labored more abundantly than they all. Now, some people have the idea, I can earn my way to heaven. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of works, uh, uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. The only way you're saved is through the grace of God. You're not, you're not going to earn your way to heaven. You so say, I don't push little ladies out on the road. That's a good thing. Don't do that. I don't, I don't run over people with my car. Hey, listen, that's a good thing, but I got to tell you, I don't care if you feed the hungry, if you clothe the, the poor, if you give to charities, those things will not get you to heaven today. Not going to get you there. You say, my name is on a church roll. I hope you're depending on more than that to get you to heaven. In just a little bit, we're going to baptize some folks, but baptism is not going to get you to heaven. Baptism comes after you get saved. You know, Paul said, I worked, I labored, more than some of those who knew, more than I did. I read a statement the other day, and I love it. The, the statement was this, the only time success comes before work is in the dictionary. Amen. Think about it. The only time success comes before work is in the dictionary. If you are going to be a successful Christian, Brother Mark, it's going to take work. Amen. Good night, is it ever going to take work? It's, you're going to have to labor to become a good Christian. Now, you don't have to labor to become a Christian, but you have to labor to become a good Christian. You say, well, how, how do you mean? Uh, uh, some people have the idea, well, I'm saved. Uh, I trusted Christ. That's it. I, I, I'm good. No, there's a whole lot more to it than just that. There's more to it than just accepting Christ. There's more to it than just getting baptized. There's more than just getting uh, on the church roll. Hey, there, it's, it's called serving God with your life. You know, I, I listen to preachers who've been preaching longer than I have. And I listen to them in admiration. I listen to them, I say, I, I want to preach like that. I want to preach like that. You know, people who don't call their pastors donkeys, you know, something like that. Yeah, that, yeah, no, those heathens, and they're not preaching anymore around here. <laughs> CJ did a great job Wednesday night. I, I was so proud of him. Did a great job. You know, I think there's some things that we just got to labor at a little more than what we, than we, should or that we do. You say, well, preacher, what do you think? Well, number one, I think we ought to labor more in savoring the grace that brought salvation. Paul said, but by the grace of God. Please let me explain to you what grace is. It's unmerited favor. It's unmerited favor. In other words, uh, you get something that you've never worked for, or deserved. I mean, somebody walks up to you and hands you a gift and says, I want you to have this just because I was thinking of, you've done nothing to earn it. I just want you to know, hey, uh, I'm your friend. Uh, that's, that's unmerited favor. You've not done anything to earn that. You see, uh, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. I got to tell you, yesterday I was studying and working and I about had a, a holy, holy hallelujah fit right there at my desk. I was sitting there and I started thinking about the grace of God. 
Let me tell you something. You say, I'm here today because I've been faithful to God. Hold on. Who, who helped you become a child of God in the first place? Who helped you? Who put people in your life to show you that you needed to come to church? Who put people in your life to tell you how to be saved? It, it's all by the grace of an almighty God. Hey, I am what I am by the grace of God. Hey, today I have a wife. I do not deserve her. I have children. I do not deserve them. Hey, I have a church. I do not deserve it. I have salvation. I don't deserve that either. It's all by the grace of an almighty God. Unmerited love in favor of God. John 1.14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank God for the truth, too. You know, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Brother Steve, you're saved today because of the grace of God. Uh, Roger Goodman, wherever you at back there, uh, you're saved by the grace of God. CJ, you're saved by the grace of God. We're all saved by the grace of God. And if you're not saved, the grace of God can save you. You know... Romans 5, 19, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. You say, I'm a drunkard. I got news for you, the grace of God is stronger than your drunkenness. You say, I'm, I'm a wicked sinner. Uh, the grace of God is more powerful than that. Hey, the grace of God. Take a man like my father-in-law. Uh, I, I never knew him, but uh, at this time, but they said back when he was in the military, had a filthy mouth, couldn't say two sentences without using a curse word. Hey, let me tell you something. Hey, the grace of God is stronger than that. For our rejoicing is this, for 2 Corinthians 1, 12, the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but... By the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you word. 2 Corinthians 8 9, For ye know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that ye through His poverty might be rich. You say, what was Jesus uh, leaving heaven and coming to earth to die for a sinful man? You say, what is that? That's a picture of grace today. Hey, today, why don't you just relish and savor the fact that God has shown you His grace today? I, I, I think I can say this. I think uh, sometimes we, 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 we're, we're saved and we're, and we're where we need to be and sometimes we, we take it for granted, the grace of God. We take it for granted. You know, somebody just got saved. Boy, they're excited about it. You know what? Some of us have been saved for 10 and 15 and 25 and 35 years. We ought to get excited about it too. The grace that brought it down to man. Amazing grace! How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. That is the grace of God. Oh, I, we ought to savor the grace of God. Number two, we ought to seek to wholeheartedly love our Savior. I asked myself this question this morning. Do I love God with all my heart? Saying we love God with all our heart and actually loving God with all our heart is two different things. You see, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Hey, child of God, do you love God with all your heart? Do we... I, can I say this? I'm here today because I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I want to be obedient to Him. Just a few minutes ago, uh, I placed my tithe in the offering plate. You say, why did you do that? Because I, I love the Lord. Uh, I try to reach people for Christ. I, I, I want to love people and I want to give to people and I want to be there for them. But, but, but although you say, preacher, yes, you ought to love your church and you ought to love your, your church members, and I do. But let me tell you something. If I can love God with all my heart and with all my soul, with all my might and with all my strength, I will be a whole lot better pastor for you. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be so much better. Mark 12, 30, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. 
Mark 12, 33, and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul, with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. It's Brother Mark's job to lead the music. Brother Mark, I don't know your heart. I, I, feel, like, I feel like you love the Lord. I'll listen. He'll be he'll be trying to put people in the right place, and they're trying to get the PA right, and trying to get everything. And and I'm all for those things. You know me. I want things to be in order, and I want them to be right, and I want them. Be, but you know what? At the end of the day, we ought to be singing because we love the Lord. Hey, we ought to be preaching. Hey, preacher, you say, oh, I don't feel like preaching today. Okay, preach because you love the Lord. I don't want to be a soul winner. Be a soul winner because you love the Lord. Amen. I promise you the things that you don't want to do in your life will help you more if you say, you know what, I'm going to do this because I love the Lord. Amen. I've been married 17 years. I, I've taken, by the grace of God, I've taken care of my wife and my family for these years. I go to work. I provide for my family because I love them. You know, I got to tell you, if I, let, if, I had, if, if I let my wife and my children sleep under a bridge last night, and we had to go down to the dump and dig through the garbage to see if we could find something to eat, but I look at, I look at her and look at my good kids and say, I want you to know I love you. They're going to have a hard time believing that. Because I'm supposed to take care of my family, the Bible tells me. Oh, you say, I, I, I don't want to do such and such. All right, the question is not to ask yourself, I don't want to do such and such for the Lord. The question is, do I love God enough to do it? Amen. Do I love the Lord enough to do it? Let me say this, number three, quickly. I said, number one, we to savor uh, the grace of God. Uh, number two, we ought to seek to love our Savior. Number three, uh, we need to labor to be spiritually steadfast. Amen. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Unmovable. Uh, that word steadfast means constant, firm, resolute, not fickle or wavering. You know, on Sunday morning when I get up, you know, uh, when I wake up in the morning, uh, I know what I'm doing all day today. I, I, Sunday school at 10 o'clock, well, I'm here way earlier than that, but I'm just saying Sunday school at 10 o'clock, preaching at 11 o'clock, hey, tonight, 6 o'clock, we're going to have church again. Uh, my day is already planned. Why? Because the Lord tells me not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Uh, you know, it bothers me every time you turn around, churches are canceling church for this and that and the other. Hey, you know, we need to be steadfast in being faithful to God's house. Hey, you know, we got to be steadfast in, in reading our Bible and pray. Hey, you say, well, I, I didn't get to read it this morning. Okay, read it in the afternoon. Uh, 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 I didn't get to read it in the afternoon. Okay, read it at night. But be steadfast in what you're doing. Hey, be unmovable. You know what? Uh, there's a bunch of crazy people politicians and a bunch of lunatics running around and their, their minds are not going to be changed. Amen. You know, our minds ought not to be changed either. Amen. Last week we had a little birthday party for, for Allie and, and, and I had both my brother-in-laws there and, and, and we got on the subject of politics. You, you want to make a birthday party interesting, start talking about politics. I mean, it almost felt like a, it almost felt like a family reunion by the time we got done. My, one of my brother-in-laws looked at me and he said, you know, I don't talk about politics because people are not going to change my mind and I'm probably not going to change theirs. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? I've made up my mind as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I, by the grace of God, and I say by the grace of God, my, not, my mind will not be changed. Amen. Hey, my, my, my children will grow up every Sunday morning and every Sunday night and every Wednesday night in the house of God. When we have revival, they'll be there. And they're not only going to be there, they're going to participate in it. Why? Because you're going to have to decide, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. Yes. you got to be steadfast. Be unmovable. If you can continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, hey, there's only one way to heaven. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said I am the door. I, I read a statement the other day that said this uh, Jesus is the door and the hinges that hold that up is to the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Son, I said good night, that's good. There's only one way to heaven and you ain't going to change my mind. I'm going to do my best to change yours though. I want to be steadfast. 
Colossians 2, 4, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the Spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Hey, Paul said, there's some folks that are trying to teach you the wrong way. Hey, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. You say, I'm not going to join this church. You find a church that preaches this blessed old book and they stand on the foundation and the doctrine of the Word of God. Hey, let me tell you something. Grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ and be steadfast. Unmovable. Uh, on Thursday, on Thursday, we, uh, uh, we, if y'all noticed, we voted on uh, uh, getting the concrete poured there in front of Patterson Hall. Well, uh, uh, Short Lyrely brought in this machine. It's, it's kind of a jackhammer on the end of his uh, end of his bobcat, and he busted that stuff up. And, and and we got that thing formed out, and we got that thing poured. Let me tell you something. I dare you to go out there and try to move that concrete. In fact, I'll pay you money to, for you to go out there with your fingers and try to move it. You're not gonna move it. You know why? It's there to stay unless Short comes back with his bobcat. (laughs) You know what? I want to be like that concrete. I want to be steadfast, unmovable. When other people make fun of us for being faithful to church, I want to be steadfast. Amen. Hey, when, when people criticize the preacher because he preaches the Word of God, hey, don't, don't, don't think for one minute, uh, I, I, when I preach the way I do, don't you think for one minute the devil don't come at me and, and fight me and try to get me to back down. But by the grace of God, Brother Mark, we'll be steadfast preaching the Word of God. Let me say this. I need to labor to strengthen my life with spiritual doctrine. In 2 Timothy 2.14, the Bible says, Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them therefore before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Uh, that word there, subverting, uh, that, that has the idea of a catastrophe. Let me tell you something. There are Christian people, their lives have become catastrophic. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they did not stay steadfast in the Word of God. The other night I said, this is the handbook. Last Wednesday night, I think it was, no, two Wednesday nights ago, I said, this is the handbook for what we preach and what we teach. Let me tell you something. If you don't get in the Word of God, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen you're going to miss out on some great blessings. First of all, through the Scripture. But I'm going to tell you this, there's not a person alive that can stay spiritually strong without the meat of the Word of God. You, you've got to have... Oh, if you're, if you're brand new, you just got saved. Uh, the Bible says you need the milk of the Word. And, and, and almost like, almost like feeding, feeding you a baby bottle. And we're going to give it to you a little bit at a time. But let me tell you something. Uh, you say, I, I, I've been in church all my life. But let me tell you something. If you're not in the Word of God, then you're not getting stronger. Amen. You see, the Bible says shun false teachings. You say, how do you, de- how do you decipher if somebody's teaching false doctrine or not? I go see what the book says. Uh, line upon line, precept upon precept, and, and, and somebody says something. You ever heard somebody say something and in your mind you're thinking, that don't ring right. Amen. That, don't, that just don't sound right to me. I'm going to go to the Bible and find out what the Word of God says about it. Strengthen yourself. Strengthen yourself. Strengthen yourself in the Word of God. You say, what is theology? The word theos means God. The word logos means expression. Theology is this, it's the science of God. Now, doctrine, what is doctrine? When you hear me, uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, endure sound doctrine. They will not endure sound doctrine. What does that mean? That means, Brother John, they will not listen to what the Word of God says. Because doctrine is what the Bible teaches. The doctrines of the Word of God. You say, well, uh, I, I'm saved, but I don't ever look at the Bible. Let me tell you something. Somebody could come along your way and start telling you something. You know what? They'll pull you away from the truth. Because you, you don't know it. You know, strengthen yourself in the Word of God. So I've been saved 35 years. Okay, stay in the Word of God. Brother Mark, I wonder... As people get out of church, I wonder if the, the first place it started was in their private life, not reading the Word of God, not praying, 
not, not seek. You know, folks go, I don't know about you, but if I go for a little while and I haven't read my Bible, uh, somewhere along the line is thinking, you know what, I haven't read the Bible today. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know about you, it's better for me in the morning than in, in the afternoon and evening because if I'm in the afternoon or I'm in the evening, uh, either in the evening time, my brain's just dead. You know, you're trying to, you're trying to read it. But phones going off and different things. L- listen, but you find a time. You find a time. Whatever's good for you. Some of you have to be up super early in the morning to go to work. Okay, when you come home, just get in it. We've got some brand new Christians. I mean, just baby Christians. Listen, you, you, just, you just get in the Word of God. You say, I don't understand it all. Well, welcome to the club, because I don't either. Amen. Brother Randy will come to me and he'll say, let me ask you a theological question. Yeah, that, that tells me I'm getting set up for something. I'm about to be a sucker. And he'll, when he says that, he does this big smile. Let me ask you a question. Thinking, you stinking devil. He does it on purpose. Amen. You know... The Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. Amen. You know, Brother Mark could say to me, Preacher, I, I was reading this verse and I, I kind of got this out of it. And he may bring it from a whole different angle than what I was thinking about it. Amen. You see, we, we, we iron sharpeneth iron. You know, husbands and wives, you ought, you ought to talk to each other about the Scripture. Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, we, have, we have husband and wife duos that, that teach Sunday school. Uh, my wife and I both taught Sunday school this morning. We were gonna. We, we were probably gonna talk about it a little bit, except for last night. I, I laid back in the recliner, and that was all she wrote. I crawled into bed about one o'clock this morning, or twelve o'clock, twelve thirty, one o'clock. Yeah. But you know, our children, they need to be able to come to us and talk to us about the Word of God. Yes, sir. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. You say, I don't understand something. Ask God. I, I've read some things or I've read about situations in the Bible and Brother Mark, I'm thinking, why would God let this go on? Right. Why, would, why would He allow this to take place? But I believe this, every, every word and every verse was given for our well-being. Amen. Sometimes I'm reading through there and I'm thinking, Lord, I don't understand why you put this in here, but I'm just going to read it anyway. You, you start begatting everybody in the world, you know, good night. We got it. This one found a girl. He liked her. They grew up. They got married and they had babies. We got it. Let's move on. But we need the doctrine to make us strong. You know, I don't think you're ever going to get too much of the Word of God. So I've got too much of it. No, I don't think so. Brother Ray Young was just with us. And uh, we, took him to, we took him to eat supper at a steakhouse. And my philosophy is if I'm going to a steakhouse, that's what I feel led to order steak. And he said, he told me this. He said, uh, I said, Brother Ray, are you going to get a steak? He said, no. He said, uh, he said, I grew up on a farm. And he said, my dad would butcher cows. He said, we had, we had meat and steak. He said, my, our refrigerator was always full with steak. And I said, is that heaven on earth or what? <laughs> I love steak. But he said, I, he said I, I, I had it so much growing up. He said, I really don't order it that much. I had to sit back for a second because I couldn't take all that in. You know, I was like, well, hold on. Here's a man saying, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's tired of steak. You know, sometimes we read the Bible and we think, oh, we've already read that. We've already chewed on that a little bit. I've already meditated. We were talking the other night about meditating. We don't meditate on the Word of God. I'm guilty of it. I don't meditate on it like I should. Uh, David talks about meditating. I mean, just, just getting a thought and just thinking on that thing. But you know, I got to thinking. The Word of God... Sometimes, you, Brother Burrell always picks on me because like, if I go to a certain restaurant, I have something I'm going to order. And he's always telling me, he said, why don't you branch out? I said, why do I need to branch out when what I order works just fine? But Brother Burrell, I've been trying to branch out just a little bit. I'm working on it. 
he'll order all this stuff. And I'm like, what? What is wrong with you, man? He said, you got to try new things. Yeah, I'm afraid I bite in something my mouth's a thousand degrees. Then I'm in trouble. Amen. You know, we don't need to change the Word of God. Amen. We don't need to change the diet of the Word of God. We just need to keep enjoying it. I heard somebody say this. You know, you may put water in a basket with holes in it. And that water may run through and you may never be able to hold water. But the whole time your basket's getting cleaner. And that's what the Word of God is. It will clean us up. It'll change us. It'll strengthen us. And let me say this lastly. I need to labor more in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother Mark, when is there a time where we can say we've witnessed enough? The only time that we could ever say we've witnessed enough when everybody on the face of the earth is saved by the grace of God. And I got news for you, there are millions of people that are not saved by the grace of God. Not only do I want to be sharing the gospel here, we need to be sharing the gospel everywhere else. There's no doubt. Some people probably think I'm a, uh, I spend too much money on missions. My personal opinion, now we try to be careful, but my personal opinion is you can never invest too much money in the souls of men. Amen. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Mark 16, 15, He said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Can you imagine Paul in his younger years when he first started preaching. And Brother, Brother Andy, we get down to here where he says, I've, I've finished my course, I've kept the faith. If the, if the older, wiser Paul could look back at the younger Paul, he'd say, boy, I sure would do some things different. Yeah, I, I, maybe I would have done this, I would have done that. But he said, you know what? I'm here today by the grace of God. God kept me through all the shipwreck. God kept me through uh, the torture. And God kept me through all that. Let, let me tell you today, it may be that it's the grace of God that's brought you here today. Amen. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to die someday. And there's an eternity that we're going to. The Bible tells us there's a place called heaven and there's a place called hell. Let me ask you this. In your heart and your mind today, if you were to die right now, where would you go? Amen. If today was your last day on earth, where would you spend eternity? Amen. In Luke 16, I believe it is, there's a man, the Bible calls him a rich man, that he woke up in, the, in fire. Amen. You know, People say, if I can have this in my life, I'll have a good life. If I have a house and a picket fence and I have a family and I've got a good job, I, I, I've got everything one could want. You see, the problem is we're just looking at today. And we're just looking at here. Where are you going to spend eternity when you die? So, preacher, I believe, I believe that when I die, I'm going to be put in a grave and that's it. I, I hate to tell you, you're sadly mistaken. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we're all sinners, every one of us. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. My dad's a good man. My dad's a sinner. He's a saved sinner now, but he's a sinner. You know, the preacher who's been preaching to you for the last 30 minutes is a sinner. And I had to be saved by the grace of God. You see, we're all sinners because we're sinners. There's a penalty for sin. The wages of sin is death. Amen. I've preached all the funerals I care to preach, but I promise you this, if I'm still alive 10 years from now, if the Lord had not come back, there'll be more funerals to preach. There'll be more people slipping out into eternity. You're a sinner, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a sinner. The wages of our sin is death. We're all going to die someday. Well, may I say to you that Jesus Christ paid your sin debt. Amen. But God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Say, I'm not that bad. If you told a lie, you're a sinner. Amen. I'm not that bad. If you've had a wicked thought, you're a sinner. Right. If you've taken something that was not yours, you're a sinner. Right. We're, we're, we're all sinners. And, and, but Jesus said, I know what you are. And He says, I want to take care of what you are. 
For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for me. You say, okay, preacher, I get it. I'm a sinner. I, well, I'm going to die. I get that. I get it. Jesus died on the cross and He was buried and He rose again. What I got to do? Well, you just need to ask the Lord to save you. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Brother Dennis, I love that word whosoever because that means anybody. Amen. Red, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in His sight. It doesn't matter. Rich, poor. It does not matter. Senior citizens, young people. Today, if you've never called on the Lord to save you, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I would not embarrass anyone. I promise you, I would not embarrass you for nothing in the world. You're here today and you say, Preacher, I'm not sure if I died. If I, when I died, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure that I've placed my trust in Jesus Christ. With no one looking, would you slip your hand up and say, Preacher, that's me. I see that hand. Would there be another? Preacher, that's me. I'm not sure if I died today, I'd go to heaven. Would you slip your hand up? I'll not embarrass you. I promise you, I would not embarrass you for nothing in the world. Preacher, that's me. I'm not sure I know where I'm going when I die. Would there be another? I see that hand. Thank you. Would there be another? I see that hand. Would there be another? Preacher, I'm not sure if I died today, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure about it. To the, to the men that have raised their hand, men, just you that raised your hand, would you look at me? Could I have somebody take the Bible and show you from the Scripture how to be saved? Sir, could I have somebody do that for you? Would you, would you, would you gentlemen please come forward? Uh, I, I need a couple soul winners, Brother Burrell, Brother, Brother Mark. I need a couple uh, men. I've got a young man coming down the aisle here. Uh, Brother Burrell, whoever. There's a gentleman coming right behind you, Brother Burrell. Would there be another preacher? I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure I'm saved. Anybody else? Let me ask you this, you say, preacher, I know I'm saved. I remember when I called on the Lord. Would you slip your hand up, preacher? You say, why do you, have us, why do you have us raise our hand every time? We need to be reminded that we're saved. That we called on the Lord. Remember the grace of God we were talking about? You can put your hands down. Let me ask you this. Would you say, preacher, I'm saved, but I'm backslidden on God. I've not been walking in the Word of God. I've not been reading the Word of God. I've not been praying like I should. And preacher, I, God spoke to my heart today. If that's you, would you slip your hand up? Preacher, pray for me. God spoke to my heart. I see that hand. Is there another? We're going to stand to our feet. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. If you need to be uh, baptized today, you come forward. You need to join this church. We'll talk with you about that. If God spoke to your heart today, the altar's open. We've got people being dealt with. Amen. The man died, the master calleth.